Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and this is the project that I will be making today in this video. This is a 12 month disc bound calendar notebook and it's a pretty simple project to put together. I am using the Graphic 45 Flower Market collection. Look at this gorgeous sort of statement piece. Um, every month has a flower associated with it and so you'll see that design prominent with each of these divider uh, pages that I've made. And it comes with this calendar grid that you can fill in. So whenever you buy this uh, paper collection, don't feel like you have to be rushed to make a project with it because that calendar is going to be good for any time. The tag here I've used, I've made as a little tuck spot so that you can maybe slip a photo behind there, maybe some receipts. And I will um, show you at the end a little bit more slowly each of these months, but you, you can see how colorful and how gorgeous all of these are. And I've only used half of the collection pack. So you could actually, from one 12 by 12 collection pack, you could get two of these notebooks. I've also used some of the 12 by 12 patterns and solids as well. And there's enough, more than enough for two notebooks in the patterns and solids. So let's make this. I am going to start off with, this is an ivory 80 pound cover weight sheet of cardstock that I will cut down to six and three quarters by 11. So there's going to be that extra little strip there that you can save maybe for um, sentiment strips. Along the 11 inch edge, I am going to score this at four and three quarters. So your divider or page base will end up being six and three quarters why a uh, tall by six and one quarter wide and so I'll just fold that down and um, on the back this flap here will measure four and three quarters wide by six and three quarters tall so that way you know you can choose to cut your mats and layers down differently from how I've done it if if you choose but ultimately this measures six and three quarters by 11 fully stretched out folded it measures six and three quarters tall by six and one quarter wide so here is the um, one of the pattern paper sheets from the flower market collection and what I like to do is I just trim it to 12 inches that way um, I can easily cut off half an inch from the bottom. That's a border strip that I will end up using on this project. Then I'm going to just eyeball you know, slightly above the scalloped edge of that next border strip and I'll cut that off. I'll save that for a future project. We use just about everything on this sheet, but you will have some pieces left over. Then, Spinning around to that top edge, same thing. I'm going to eyeball a little bit above or a little bit below the uh, scalloped edge there and just trim that off. Then I want this large uh, statement piece here. So I'm lining this up so that it's just inside that left edge and I'm only, I'm only trimming down to that bottom corner at the bottom of that piece. I don't want to slice all the way down because we need the calendar element at the bottom. If you have a paper trimmer um, on a track, that might be a little bit easier to do these partial cuts, but I'm, I'm so used to using my guillotine that it, um, it works well for me. You just have to kind of take it slow and make sure you don't cut all the way through. Now I'll go ahead and trim off my calendar piece and the calendar element does have a scalloped border to it, but I'm actually trimming this so that I'm only keeping the solid border. And while um, I'm at it, I'm going to just trim off the statement piece here and um, get uh, that 
top and the right hand edge so that it only shows um, the design and not any of the background border. I'm going to flip this over to the back now and from the top edge I'm going to cut down to six and three quarters because we're going to use this piece to decorate that flap, the inside of the flap or the back of the uh, flap. And from this piece, I just need a section that's four and three quarters wide. So you can either take that four and three quarters from the left hand edge or the right hand edge. Just depends on how you want to uh, frame or compose that particular pattern. And with my calendar piece, I'm gonna just trim the rest of the edges so that I've um, got that nice solid border, so I'm just trimming the scallops off. You could leave the scallops on, but uh, later you'll see why I actually did this, and it's to actually conserve and get the most out of our patterns and solids. And when we get to that point, I'll be sure to point that out. And so that gives us pretty much all of the elements we'll be using, just a couple of trimmings, um, as you can see, as waste. So not a lot of waste. I will end up using pretty much um, almost everything that you see here. So there's just the two strips uh, that I don't end up using. Um, but besides what's on screen now, I did find ways to use some of the other pieces as well. So my goal was to really try to maximize how much I used of that one sheet and um, not cut into the second sheet that is of the exact same design. That way you can actually make two of these projects with the um, other set of 12 pattern papers or make a different calendar project because um, it's really nice to to have the full 12 months represented for anything that you decide to do. So I that was one of my goals for how I design um, the layouts and everything for this project was to stick to just 12 sheets and try to maximize it. So here's a sheet of one of the patterns and solids and I do end up using uh, one and a half sheets for the dividers themselves and then I used a little bit more than that for uh, decorating the front and back covers. And the first thing I did was just trim off that uh, top branding strip and then I'm cutting this down to a width of 5 and 11 uh, sixteenths to a height of six and three quarters. And the piece that's left over, I am using that to mat my calendar. So this is why I trimmed off the scalloped edges so that I can actually, from this piece that remains, I can actually um, have enough to mat the calendar, give it that really nice uh, solid border that helps it to actually kind of stand out a little bit and I don't there is still a rectangle left over from the patterns and solids um, but this sheet is wide enough now to um, use on a second uh, set of divider um, pages so that's the other reason to trim it to something smaller than or up to six inches so that I would have enough to um, to actually maximize uh, how much of that I, that I use on the project and minimize how many sheets I have to cut into. So always a consideration for me when I'm designing my projects to, to really get the most out of my papers and try to have efficient cuts. So now I'm gonna start to decorate my divider. I'm gonna start off with this border strip along the left-hand edge, and that's actually serving two purposes. One, I think it's just a nice aesthetic look, but that is where we are going to punch the disc binding holes. And so I wanted an extra layer of cardstock there to just make sure it's a little bit sturdy and to um, you know give us a little bit more structure there. 
and I'll go ahead and um, adhere all of my pattern papers. I, I, as I mentioned, wanted to really kind of maximize how much I used um, and that way to really showcase all of these gorgeous papers. So I'm taking all of these matte layers all the way to, you know, the uh, edge so that there really isn't much of, um, and in some cases, none of the ivory cardstock showing. And I just, with papers this gorgeous, I really just want to, um, you know, maximize how much of it gets seen and used. And so this is uh, the back of the pattern paper. And so I've gone ahead and attached that, that to the flap. So this piece was four and three quarters by six and three quarters. And then with my calendar here, you do have to be careful because the calendar is wider than four and three quarters. So the left, the right hand edge will hang off of that flap. So make sure you don't put any adhesive on that right hand side that overhangs the flap because you don't want to accidentally glue this shut. Um, I mean, you could, but you would lose a little bit of the functionality of, um, of the divider. But the leftover strip here, again, I'm going to be using uh, the back side and just adding that as a nice little accent strip to the inside of this flap. And you can, you can always save this strip for a future project if you wanted. Um, but I thought it would be a nice way to bring some of that color onto um, the inside when you open up this flap. So that is um, pretty, pretty close to complete. I did add a couple of extra elements to it. So I did add um, that header piece and the tag, which I've only glued on the left hand edge and the bottom edge. That way it's a little bit of a tuck spot. It's not huge, but you could, you know, tuck a photo in there. You could tuck a couple receipts, um, whatever you need. Now for actually punching our holes, anytime I do a binding project, I like to make a template first. You can make it out of copy paper, scratch paper, whatever you have. It doesn't have to be cardstock like I've used here, but I wanted this to show up nicely. So, um, so that's what I've done. And by creating yourself a template that's exactly the size of your project, you can, um, if you need a little bit of trial and error to get this exactly right, you won't be wasting your pretty papers or cutting into your project and having to remake anything. Especially with a project like this where I really did not want to have to cut into that second set of 12. <laughs> now the cinch does have a guide for where um, to start your punch um, just based on the length of that edge that you wanna punch holes into. But the way I like to do it is I like to find the center point of that edge that we want to punch our holes. And then I just draw a pencil line down the center. On the cinch itself, there is a centering line. So you can see that with the line extended out from the edge, it makes it a lot easier to line it up with that centering arrow. And that's the other reason to use a template because I don't want to be drawing this long pencil line through my project. And the reason why I, um, and actually, if you wanted, you, you could do that, I suppose, before you start um, actually uh, decorating. But what I would definitely recommend is the little border strip that we added to that um, left-hand edge of the uh, page. I would definitely add that first and then punch through both layers. That way everything is exactly lined up. So all I'm gonna do is uh, hold my template with my page together. They're the exact same size, so just wanna make sure to the left and right it's uh, lined up. And then I lined up my centering mark and then I punched the first set of holes. The mini cinch only punches four holes and it always punches four holes at a time. And so what I want to be careful of is that because all four holes will punch, 
Uh, unlike the uh, large cinch where you can pull out the pegs and decide which holes go down and which don't, the mini, it, you don't have that um, flexibility. So it is possible, just depending on you know, uh, your page, it's possible that you could get a partial punch through the edge of your page. And I definitely want to avoid that. So here, the way that I like to think of it is I always want that rightmost hole to be um, the last hole that is on top of my project. That way, there's nothing to the right of that fourth hole. And so there's no danger that I get a partial hole punch. So what I want to do is just slide my project because there is a um, peg on the left of the mini cinch that perfectly slots into a previously punched hole. And that will make sure that the spacing stays even and consistent. Now, when I go to punch this, the first three holes are going through holes that I've already punched. But it's that last hole that's going to punch um, the final hole on the top of my page here that I need and I'll have no risk of actually um, a partial hole punch off that top edge. Now to get the bottom most hole you just flip to the back and you do the same thing. So just um, making sure that that last the fourth hole on my cinch is the only one that's on top of my project. I'll lock in to a previously punched hole with that peg on the left and that keeps everything nicely spaced so that it's perfectly aligned and then I'll punch that final hole. So that's that's how I like to um, do all of my um, uh, binding projects just to ensure that I don't get partial hole punches. So here's a final look at the completed notebook again. I've got really just very simple decorations. This does end up being kind of chunky. I'm using discs from Happy Planner that are one and a quarter inch. So um, so that gives you an idea for how chunky this is. But there is still room to maybe, uh, I might punch out some blank notebook pages so that there's some blank note, pa note pages as well. Uh, just to add to the functionality of this calendar planner or calendar notebook. And so for each month, there's this gorgeous uh, statement piece on the front. We have the calendar, which they can fill in when I gift this. They can fill it in and use it um, for whatever year they want and just write in the actual uh, days. The calendar is kind of small, so that's why I made this a flip out so that there's a little bit of space on the back of this so that um, you can write some important dates, some appointments, some birthdays, whatever you'd like. And this doesn't necessarily have to be an actual like uh, planner type of calendar notebook. You could use this just for jotting down, maybe keeping track of birthdays. And on the calendar grid, you could maybe put a little mark of um, whether there's a birthday that day and then list the date and the person whose birthday it is on this back flap here. And the tag is a nice little tuck spot. Doesn't hold a lot, but <clears throat> you could put maybe a photo or two in there. You could always, if this was going to a crafty friend, you could they could always just um, do some more decorating. But you can see each of these uh, flowers is just gorgeous. And the entire paper collection is very uh, colorful, beautiful. I love the statement piece on all of them. You have um, <clears throat> everything just really matches and coordinates beautifully, as always. Um, and I love the addition of this little header piece. Um, my guess is that's what the poinsettia stands for, but I'll have to look that up. Um, and then I did keep the um, back cover 
pretty simple because I just didn't want to use up too much of the patterns and solids. That way there's a little bit something left over. For the front cover, again, I used some more patterns and solids, some of the leftover strips, and then some die cut ephemera pieces just to have this little bit of a collaged um, focal image here. And so this is uh, the, the completed project. I hope you like it. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.